So everyone in the art community has been wondering how PewDiePie somehow managed to make an insane amount of progress with his art in a ridiculously short amount of time during what seemed to be an impossible challenge. And I'm guessing the question on everyone's mind is, how did he do it? What proper structured plan did PewDiePie follow to improve his drawing so fast and how was he able to learn all of this without any prior knowledge of art? Well, I studied PewDiePie's entire challenge videos and I found 6 drawing exercises that made him improve his art fast along with some best practices to motivate you and attune your mindset on your artistic journey. And starting off, we have indirect studies through copying. This is a common drawing exercise where you copy drawings and art from anime, western cartoons, comic books or from your favorite artists that have an art style you enjoy and are eagerly trying to learn from. But it seems most people fail to execute this drawing exercise properly and instead of practicing by observation, they make the mistake of tracing the art they're trying to learn from and then somehow end up posting it online which gets everyone in the art community agitated and riled up, calling the artist out for tracing and then proceeding to cancel them. Tracing over the drawing doesn't teach you anything in the long run and instead of helping you improve, it just ends up making you a better tracer. How you should approach this is to do something similar to what PewDiePie did during his 100 day drawing challenge, but this time we're taking it a step further. Find an artist you enjoy and pick one thing you want to focus on learning in their art. Then you practice drawing that particular thing over the course of a week. You could focus on specific features of the body, features of the head, clothing folds or anything that seems to give you a tough time and you would like to improve on it. At this point of the exercise it doesn't necessarily have to be a specific artist that you can copy you could also draw from your favorite anime cartoon series or anything that inspires you really after copying the reference directly for a week Try to practice drawing it on your own without looking at the reference and forcing yourself to try and remember what you saw when you were drawing. This is a good exercise to improve your observational skills and pushes you to try to understand what you are drawing rather than just blindly tracing over it and copying it. Take note of the distance and relationship of the features in the reference and try to apply that to your own drawings, keeping in mind your proportions and how everything ties in together. And you can literally do this for everything you suck at and are trying to improve on drawing hands, painting feet and even learning how to draw juicy lips. And if you're new to this channel and love listening to art commentary style videos or just videos talking about things happening within the art community, please subscribe to the channel and join the discord server using the link in the description. Steal from other artists. Hear me out. One of my favorite quotes is when you mimic artists that you admire, your mistakes become your style. The proper way to say this would have been do some master studies. Copy artists that you love and through that practice you'll find techniques that you want to use in your own art. I'm not saying publish it or post it and if you do make sure you credit the artist that you're copying but by doing this we can unlock a lot of the secrets of the art that we love the most and if we do that with a lot of different artists we're gonna come up with our own style and then it's an homage or inspiration not steal. The next drawing exercise that made PewDiePie improve fast is prioritization, which I'll go over in a second because I've seen so many artists make this mistake often and end up falling into the trap where they try to learn everything all at once at the same time. Back when I decided to finally start taking my drawings seriously and try and make some improvement with my work, I made the mistake of starting out trying to learn everything at the same time, following every single tutorial I could find on the internet without having a specific goal I was trying to hit or a specific thing I was trying to learn and this just ended up with me knowing a bunch of things but then I couldn't really remember everything I had learned after just learning them the other day and my drawing still looked bad even after I was supposedly learning new things and that's because I was solely focused on learning too many things at the same time instead of just focusing on a specific thing I was trying to improve on I solely learned and practice only drawing that for a couple of weeks anytime I compare the progress I made when I started priority learning a particular thing at one time, it always amazed me why I never just did that before. And I'm sure a lot of beginners also happen to make this mistake as well and are wondering why their progress seems stagnant. In PewDiePie's video, he starts off trying to draw heads, then switches to drawing the figure and trying to draw hands, which we all know nobody knows how to draw those perfectly, so we don't even talk about that. And then PewDiePie saw he wasn't improving as he had hoped, so he decided to focus on learning 
one thing at a time. And then he started prioritizing learning how to draw only female heads and drawing in an anime style as well. This helped him narrow down and focus on drawing only one thing which in turn made him progress faster than usual. A good way to use prioritization in your work is to pick one thing you struggle with and prioritize learning only that one thing for two to three weeks. Let's say for instance you finally decided to face your fears and start learning how to draw hands. For the first week, essentially what you want to do is start off by learning the basic shapes and forms that build up the hands and figures and how you can turn these shapes around in three dimensional space and draw them from different angles. Practice drawing the hands using the basic shapes all through week one and focus on nailing the gesture of the hands using only the basic shapes. In week two, you'd want to start narrowing it down to learning how to incorporate the forms and start loosely adding muscle and bones while drawing the basic shapes. At this point, it should start getting easier because you already understand what the fingers and the hands look like without any of those details. So drawing them in after starting out with good shape language becomes easy. Once you've practiced this enough, you can move on to week three where you start actively drawing hands from reference using everything you have learned and also try drawing your own hands from life as well. After practicing drawing them from reference for some time, Turn a new sheet or open a new layer and try to draw the hand from your head without looking at the reference. This should prove a bit challenging and you're bound to make some mistakes. But try to focus on nailing the gesture of the pose of the hand you are trying to draw and simplify the pose in your head using the basic shapes before drawing the tiny details like the muscles, knuckles and everything else. Keep practicing like this and once you begin to see progress and are comfortable enough to draw any pose of the hand without looking at the reference, you can then start prioritizing learning another thing you suck at. Which for 90% of everyone watching this video will be drawing feet. And that sadly includes me making this video. The next drawing exercise which for the most part is not really an exercise but more of a common practice is repetition or how the gym bros like to call it reps. Repeating something over and over is a good way to force yourself into learning something new by drawing it over and over again. Tricking your brain into actively remembering what it looks like each time you draw it again. You tend to hold on to things like the shape or how a certain line was drawn and the direction it was facing. This in turn makes drawing it from reference and off head easier after a while. PewDiePie actively drew the same images over and over, repeating them over a course of 30 days until he saw some progress in his drawings. Although the progress wasn't as significant as he would have expected since he was a beginner, it was still better than nothing and was sufficient enough to make him continue the challenge for another 100 days, which resulted in him improving his drawing skills so much and going from having little to no skill to having one of the most impressive improvement the art community has seen in a while. After concluding his drawing every day for 100 days challenge and showing everyone the mind-blowing results on his YouTube channel, it has left the art community shocked with how far he has come and how much he was able to improve in his art, with some artists rooting for him and cheering him on while others are simply shocked he was able to improve at all and are questioning if he was even truly a beginner. Which just goes to show you the power of repeating the same thing over and over again or in this case drawing the same thing over and over again. At some point it begins to become muscle memory and your brain just immediately understands the forms and the the shapes of what you are drawing, which is where applying the next drawing exercise comes in. Consuming information on the internet has been nothing short of common, and with the influx of short form content circulating the internet, it becomes harder and harder to separate what's fact and what's fiction. This can create a lot of stress and confusion when you're looking for the facts. It's important to consult your information at the direct source, and this is where Ground News comes in. Ground News is an app and website created to give readers a transparent way to read the news. With access to over 50,000 news sources, it allows you to compare headlines to see who owns the source and where the bias leads per article, giving you the complete overview of every story. For example, the EU recently gave TikTok and Facebook a 24-hour deadline to explain how they were complying with the new laws in Europe to regulate online content to tackle misinformation and illegal content. On Ground News, you can see that over 30 sources are reporting on this story and you can also get a visual representation of the political leaning of these sources on the bias distribution chart. 37% of these sources lean right and only 11% lean left for this story. We can also see in the ownership chart, it shows that 
that 61% of the sources reporting are owned by media conglomerates. Let's look at some of the headlines. There's this headline from the left. EU launches investigation into YouTube, TikTok over child protection. And this from the right, are TikTok and YouTube dangerous for children? Brussels is preparing an investigation. Both headlines talk about the same story, but the right frames YouTube and TikTok as dangerous for children, while the left only highlights that an investigation is launched over child protection. The language used on the right, dangerous, can evoke us to feel worried as to what may be happening on these platforms as there's prep for an investigation, prompting us to want to read more, while the left focuses on the problem already being tackled by the EU. One of my favorite features of Ground News is the blind spots feed, which highlights stories that are disproportionately covered by one side of the political spectrum, such as this story covering newscasters in drag making LGBTQ plus history in Mexican television, which is clearly underreported by one side of the political spectrum. The blind spot feature is fully unlocked through the vantage plan, so if you're someone like me who's always trying to stay up to date with relevant and reliable news on the internet, then I can't recommend ground news highly enough. It has made reading the news less stressful and has improved my consumption habits a lot. Break through the toxic cycles of algorithms by subscribing to my link ground.news slash Mohammed to stay informed on breaking news. And this also gets you 40% off the Vantage plan for unlimited access to all the best features like the blind spot feed, which is just $5 a month. But the sale ends on February 29th, so hurry up and join now. The next drawing exercise and the most important exercise of all is learning the basic fundamentals. Beginners often ask what to focus on when they begin their art journey, when they start to draw. And the answer is always fundamentals. Fundamentals are fundamental to artists. That's the and here they are. First, the fundamental of perspective. Then construction, gesture, anatomy, color and light theory, composition, and then design. So if you were the artist's version of Thanos, you'd want one gem to represent all seven of those fundamentals. To gain full power over your art doesn't sound as cool, but you get what I mean, right? If your fundamentals are solid, you should be able to draw or paint anything that you can imagine. Some artists get into the habit of neglecting the fundamentals when they begin to see some improvement in their work, and this often leads to them getting stagnated with their progress, and this frustration sometimes ends with the artist feeling unmotivated to draw or experiencing serious art block. Trying to learn art without learning about the fundamentals and having a structured plan to practice the fundamentals of art will end up with you spinning your wheels while remaining in the same place. So here's a simple way to approach studying the fundamentals of art. I also made it easier for artists to break it down and apply it since every artist's interests are kind of different. So I set it up in a way where you focus on what is more important for you to learn in order of preference as to what type of art you want to create. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned prioritization. Now this is a clear example of how to use that in your work. When I started off trying to learn about art, I knew I was much more interested in drawing characters and faces. But I spent time learning about compositions and drawing backgrounds and characters at the same time, which made me progress slower with my characters. So if you're an artist who is interested in drawing landscapes or painting backgrounds, it will be of better interest for you to stop prioritizing drawing characters and learning about anatomy and focus more on learning about compositions, color theory, and perspective so you can use that to improve your background paintings. The moment you figure out what you're interested in and start practicing that early, the faster you will see results in your work and your progress will immediately begin to skyrocket. Focus on your strong suits. Every artist has something they enjoy drawing or a certain art style they enjoy using to draw. Some artists enjoy drawing manga while some artists just prefer to draw super detailed hyper realistic portraits. Every artist has that one thing they enjoy and it becomes their comfort drawing or comfort art style and some people might think it's a bad thing because you then become accustomed to it and you get comfortable comfortable once you start doing it all the time. And we've all heard the saying that growth lies outside your comfort zone, but I think it can also be a good thing to focus on your strengths, especially for artists because aside from it just helping you get better faster, you also are much more motivated to draw something even when you don't feel like it. And eventually you become known for the way you draw or the particular things you like to draw. Take Sam Does Arts for example. Every
everyone knows Sam for drawing girls in the cute Disney Pixar art style and it has become entirely his theme. Anywhere you see his work you can immediately recognize it because he focused on what he enjoyed and he was particularly good at and kept practicing that till he mastered it to a T. Although people make fun of him from time to time saying he suffers from same face syndrome or whatever, I don't even think that is a problem at all because if he wants to learn how to draw different faces, it's just a matter of drawing the features of the face differently and switching up the proportions of the face which he has done multiple times on his Instagram account. So find one thing you really enjoy drawing and dedicate all your time to drawing that for the most part. Of of course it doesn't mean you'll stop practicing everything else entirely but spend more time practicing how to learn the things you enjoy and prioritize learning them first. But for any of these drawing exercises to work, you have to keep an optimistic mindset. This is something I really enjoyed seeing while watching PewDiePie's video. As much as he kept drawing every day and seeing barely any progress, he was still excited to learn art and kept a positive attitude all through the challenge. He never complained about anything and never let himself begin to despise his art so much. It was as if he was somehow allergic to negative talk altogether. As artists, we all have this voice in our head that whispers over and over telling us just how bad our drawings are and telling us will probably not amount to anything no matter how hard we try. But having a positive mindset and keeping an optimistic point of view will make sure you're motivated even during the times when you feel you're making no progress and your drawings look really terrible. Struggling with art is pretty normal for every artist. Each of us have all gone through different stages of progression in our careers and each of these stages of growth are more or less vital to developing your skills as an artist. But trying to rush through any of these learning curves or trying to speed up the process will only result in you starting all over from square one. Slow down, take your time to learn and develop a habit of enjoying the process of learning. Find things that can motivate you during the times where you feel like giving up. Share your art with a small group of friends who you share similar interests with and are all trying to grow as artists and develop your skills together. Join discord servers with like-minded people and most importantly, Create a habit of not letting comments and negative feedback from people on the internet bring you down and make you feel bad about your art. Every artist's journey is different and each artist learns art in their own way at their own pace. So stay focused kings and queens. Don't compare yourself too much with other artists and instead compare your progress with your art from a week ago, a month ago and when you started even making art. That's the only way you'll see any growth because the goal is not to be better than everyone else, but to be better than the person you were yesterday, today, and every other day moving forward. Well, this somehow turned into a self-development and motivational video towards the end. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and I'll see all you pretty penguins in the next video. Bye.